चंद्र जयंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद we can read okay thank you as far as devotional service is concerned there are two divisions in the beginning there is vidhi bhakti or devotional service with regulative principles in the higher stage there is rag bhakti or devotional service and pure love the supreme personality of godhead is the absolute truth but he is manifested by the expansions of his different energies also those who follow the regulative principles of devotional service ultimately attain to the vaikuntha planets in the spiritual world but one who follows the principles of love and devotional service attains to the supreme abode the highest planet in the spiritual world known as krishna lok or golok vrindavan so two types of sadhana bhakti we had heard lord chaitanya was saying sadhana bhakti has two divisions one is following the rules and regulations so that's vaidhi sadhana bhakti or vidhi bhakti following the vidhi the rules and regulations now what happens is when one follows this vaidhi bhakti the goal the the destination that one can reach is up to the vaikuntha planets not krishna lok but when when one performs raga bhakti bhakti in attachment then one can go up to krishna lok golok vrindavan then how to do then we are here following vaidhi bhakti we are following vaidhi bhakti raga bhakti means following the footsteps of a of a resident of vrindavan so then we will we may say that oh but following vaidhi bhakti is just going to take me to vaikuntha but i want to go to golo how do we do that that's the reason we follow lord chaitanya lord chaitanya and shrimati radha rani krishna combined so by following lord chaitanya we are performing raga bhakti i had heard bhakti charu maharaj is very nice class on this point and what is lord chaitanya telling us just chant hari krishna and give this hari krishna to others and this becomes this gradually gradually this is raga bhakti then following in the footsteps of lord chaitanya is that okay yes yes transcendentalist can also be divided into three categories the word akama refers to one who does not have any material desires moksha kama refers to one who seeks liberation from material miseries and sarva kama refers to one who wants to enjoy by fulfilling material desires the most intelligent transcendentalist gives up all other processes and engages in the devotional service of the lord even though he may have many desires through no kind of activity whether fruitive action or cultivation of knowledge or the cultivation of mystic yoga can a person achieve the highest perfection without adding a tinge of devotional service except for devotional service all transcendental processes are just like nipples on the neck of a goat the nipples on a goat's neck may be squeezed but they do not supply milk therefore if one is to derive actual perfection from his process he must take to devotional service of krishna so if one wants milk from a goat you know the goat has two types of nipples so they are on the neck yeah prabhupada is pointing out if you press the nipples on the neck you're not going to get any milk 
So similarly, if we are following the process of gyan or yoga, we have to come to bhakti to be able to get the perfection of the process that we are following. There has to be some element of bhakti, even in gyan, so that we can get liberation. There has to be some level of bhakti, even in yoga, so that we can perfect our meditation process. And this we just heard in Bhagavatam. What is akam? Akam? Akam is uh, devotees, right? Uh, akam, yeah. Who do not have uh, yeah any material desires. desires. And moksha kam. Who does not have any. Yeah. Moksha kam refers to one who seeks liberation. And from material Sarvaka. miseries. And it refers Sarvaka. to one who wants to enjoy by fulfilling material desires. So that is yes. karma. Ka. Yeah. Yeah. Like we have a lot of material desires. So whatever, we may, whichever degree, we, category we may be. Bhagavatam says engage in devotional service. Engage in right. and, and vikarma is like the one that you are prohibited, right, to do sinful activities. Yeah, yeah. Vikarma so, is the sinful activities. Yeah, mm -hmm. acting against the Vedas. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, whatever is the situation of our heart, we we begin devotional service to get the the satisfaction of our desires, whatever they may be. Sarva kama, yes. akama, or moksha kama. Just take up hearing and chanting of Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita 716, Lord Krishna states, Chatur vidha bhajante maam, jana sukriti no arjuna, arto jim. Yanushur Artharti Yanicha Bharata Sabha. O best of the Bharata, who kinds of people with very righteous backgrounds take up devotional service to me? They are the distressed, the inquisitive, and the seekers of material profit, and the jnanis or wise men. Out of these four, those who are distressed and those who desire wealth, Sakama, devotees. Devotees with material desires, whereas the other two, the inquisitive and the searcher for wisdom, are moksha kama devotees, seekers of liberation. Because they all worship Krishna, they are all considered to be very fortunate. In due course of time, if they give up all desires and become pure devotees of the Supreme Lord, they can be considered most fortunate. Such fortunate beginners can develop only in the association of pure devotees of Lord Krishna. When one associates with pure devotees, he becomes a pure devotee himself. This, this is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam 1, 10, 11. Sat Sangan Mukta Duha Dushango Hatum Nusha Hate Buddha Kirtya Manam Yashu Yasya Sakrad Akarnya Rochanam a person who is actually intelligent is able, by the association of pure devotees, to hear descriptions of Lord Krishna and his activities. These activities are so attractive that one who hears of them does not wish to give up such association of the, with the Lord. So association with the pure devotee. Association with devotees. Pure devotees. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, four kinds of pious people. Come to me. Four kinds. They can come. They, which are the four? The distress, the inquisitive, the seekers of mm -hmm. material, and the jnanis. Hmm. And then, which ones are called to be akam and which are called, or not, well, not akam, which are called moksha, moksha kam and which are called sakam? Uh, Sakam devotees are distressed, those who are distressed and those mm -hmm. who desire wealth. Mm -hmm. And the moksha kam are devotees uh, who seek, uh, 
who are inquisitive mm-hmm. and mm. gyanis yeah so yeah. yeah so krishna is saying four kinds of people now there are so many distressed people but not all distressed people come to krishna or every one of us may be uh, distressed right and then we are all not everyone comes to him many are searching for wealth not everyone comes to him or searching for knowledge or inquisitive so but he's saying very righteous background it means somebody who's done sukri, sukriti who has got agyata sukriti so that's the reason the devotees are freely doing harinam book distribution prashad distribution trying to bring people to this platform so they can somehow the other approach krishna and then associate with devotees and you know so this is like the, the technicality so that somehow the other people can get this agyata sukriti that is a compassion of the devotee the devotees are compassionate and they go everywhere every, uh, to speak about Krishna. And Bhagavatam is saying that Bhagavatam is saying one who associates with pure devotees also becomes pure devotee. One who is actually intelligent. Now we may think intelligence means if I know how to solve some math equations or if I know how to solve some economic problems or if I, you know, we, we may think, but what is real intelligence? Real intelligence is to take up devotional service. Bhagavatam says that those who are intelligent, who take up the uh, the Harinam Sankirtan in this age of Kali. So associating with pure devotees. And what, what does association with pure devotee mean? Hearing about Krishna, hearing and chanting about Krishna, that is association. And gradually, gradually, one's heart gets so attracted, attracted to hear about Krishna, that then one does not want to stop, like Parikshit Maharaj. He didn't want to stop hearing. Except for the association of pure devotees, all association is Kaitava. Or cheating. This is confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam 1, 1, 2, which states all cheating processes which obstruct transcendental realization are to be thrown off. By Srimad Bhagavatam, one can understand reality as it is. And such understanding helps to transcend the three kinds of material misery. Srimad Bhagavatam was compiled by the greatest sage, Yasadev, and it is work coming out of his mature experience. By understanding Srimad Bhagavatam and rendering devotional service, one can immediately capture the Supreme Lord within his heart. Nityam Bhagavata Seva. Sorry? Sorry. So, so here Bhagavatam says it rejects completely the cheating religion. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Bhagavatam has nothing to do with Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Bhagavatam is only about pure devotional service. Uh, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, His incarnations, His pure devotees. That's it. There's nothing to do with Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, which is called cheating processes. Kaitava Dharma. Uh, yeah, now that the Shilavyasa Dev is saying this. In, just in the second verse itself of Bhagavatam, it's saying, and that's why Bhagavatam is called Amala Puran. It's completely pure. There's no cheating there. It's completely pure. And that's the that's the reason why by hearing Bhagavatam, gradually, gradually, we can revive our love for Krishna. By hearing Bhagavatam, rendering devotional service, one can immediately capture the Supreme Lord within his heart. So it's Amala Puran, completely pure. Lord Chaitanya again explained that the word Puji in this Bhagavatam reverse refers to the desire for liberation. One great commentator explained that desire for liberation is the most obstructive stumbling block on the path of God's realization. But if one somehow or the other 
comes to Krishna and begins to hear about him, Krishna is so kind that he awards him his lotus feet as a shelter. Then the devotee of transcendentalist forgets everything and engages in the devotional service of the Lord. When one comes to the Lord in devotional service or in full Krishna consciousness, the reward is supreme himself. One can reach for the supreme, one no longer asks for anything, as do the distressed man and he who desires material possessions. The association of pure divorce deeds, the causeless mercy of the Lord, and devotional service itself, these three act so wonderfully that one can give up all other activities and become absorbed in Krishna. When whether one is distressed in one in want of material possessions or inquisitive, or even if one is a wise man cultivating knowledge. So this is pure Krishna consciousness. Here, Lord Chaitanya sings, one, we may have desire for liberation, but if simply we can begin to hear and chant, Krishna will attract our heart. And because Krishna is all attractive, the happiness in, uh, that one achieves in uh, uh, while associating with Krishna, hearing about him, chanting his glories, is the highest pleasure that we can experience. And that's the reason one can forget everything else. So pure devotee, he's with Krishna. And that's the reason he doesn't want anything. He says, I don't care to go and have a And it's also because he's with Krishna. And because he's with Krishna, he doesn't want anything else. Like Dhruv Maharaj. He wanted a great kingdom. Now he's, he saw, he got Krishna. So he's like, I don't want anything else. It's the highest bliss that I can uh, experience. So you have Lord Chaitanya is saying, association of pure devotees, causeless mercy of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord and devotees is very important because we can't do anything by ourselves. We are, we need this causeless mercy and devotional service. Oh, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Yes. Yeah. Could you explain that sentence that desire for liberation is the... Um, Stumbling block for devotion. What is he oh, The most obstructing stumbling block, block on the path of God realization. So many of us, well, uh, how I understand it is because we think liberation means I'm going to become God, right? We always thinking I'm going to merge into the light and I'm going to become supreme. So that becomes uh, that we have to then understand that I'm not God. God is a separate person. He can never become God. Then when, why do we say that Brahma Bhuta platform is the liberation, right? Platform. Yeah, that is to understand that yes. I'm a spirit soul. Because what happens is what we are hearing in this world as mukti and uh, liberation, right? What we are hearing, what usually comes to mind is that I'll give up this body and then I will merge into the form, into the light. I will merge into the light. I will become the light. So that is like committing spiritual suicide, like not wanting to be a uh, uh, a person anymore, but wanting to give up our individuality. I mean, not wanting to be an individual anymore, wanting to give up the individuality to just become one with the light. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's the general understanding, that I'm going to become one with the light. Right, or like nothing, yeah, you become or nothing. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that I'm going to become nothing. So that's like spiritual suicide, which is very different, which is not true at all. Whereas we can never stop being individuals. We are always individuals. Okay. Okay. Like, you know, so strongly it says, huh? it's a stumbling. stumbling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because then the, the desire to inhalate one's existence is so much or the desire to become God is so much. Okay. 
So they say, like they say, no one should not ask for mukti, right? Yeah. Like always, you know, we're saying like, yeah, I want mukti, I want mukti. So in this context, that's what it means. Like, yeah, like you are asking, like you're thinking that you're going to go to the light. You're going to be a light. Merge into yeah. the light. Yeah, right? merge into the light. Means giving up our individuality. Means that spiritual suicide then. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, got it. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll continue. In summary, as the meaning behind all the words in the Atmarama verse. Up to this point, Lord Chaitanya spoke only of the introduction of Atmarama verse. Next, he explained its real position. There are two kinds of transcendentalists who cultivate knowledge. One of them worships the impersonal Brahman and the other desires liberation. The Brahman worshippers or monists are further divided into three categories. The neophyte, one who is observed in Brahman realization and one who has actually realized himself as Brahman. If devotional service is added, the knower of Brahman can then become liberated. Otherwise, there is no possibility of liberation. So then those who are on the Gyan path, they are two kind. One is the Brahmavadi, one who understands that, that God is light, and but I'm not God. Uh, that, that's very few. Just now as we were speaking, everyone wants to become light. I want mukti, liberation. That is more. But there are very few who will understand, oh, I'm not this supreme light. And that supreme light is, he's the supreme Brahman. And, but I'm not that. I'm just a tiny, tiny part. So the Brahman worshippers are divided into three categories. Neophyte, who's absorbed in Brahman realization. And then one who has actually realized himself as Brahman. Means understanding I'm a spirit soul. I'm a spirit soul. And if devotional service is added, the knower of Brahman then can become liberated. So what does this mean? As Krishna says, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Na Sochati Na Kanshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Labhate Para When one understands I'm spirit soul, when he understands devotional service, then he understands, oh, I need, because I'm spirit soul, I need to engage in pure devotional service. Then that is the real liberated platform. That is beginning of real life. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. So these two are the stumbling blocks. And the last one is the one we should actually be in devotional service, right? The new found yeah. and the one Agent was asking, right? So the Brahmavadi, that's not really a stumbling block, but this one, desiring to become the Supreme Brahman, that is the main point. Yeah, that is the is main stumbling block. Yeah. yeah, because understanding that God is light, but I'm not that God, I, a tiny, tiny particle of that light. That is called Brahmavadi, like for example, Four Kumaras, Sukadev Goswami, they were on that platform. And then they heard about Krishna. So they began devotional service. And then they became pure devotees, actually liberated. Because even if we become Brahmavadi, but where do you go from there? Because the knowledge of Krishna is not yet there. So they have to go higher. They have to go higher. Does that make sense? Yes, very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Anyone who is fully anyone who is fully engaged in devotional service in Krishna consciousness is understood to be already realized in Brahman. Devotional service is so strong that one is attracted to Krishna even from the platform of Brahman worship. Lord awards the devotee the perfection of a spiritual body and the devotee eternally engages in transcendental service of Krishna. 
It is when the devotee understands and becomes attracted by Krishna's transcendental qualities that he wholeheartedly engages in devotional service. For instance, the four Kumaras and Sukadev Goswami were liberated from the, from the beginning of their life. Yet in, yet in their later life, they became attracted to the pastimes of Krishna and became devotees. Sanaka and other Kumaras were attracted by the aroma of the flowers offered to Krishna and by his transcendental qualities and thus engaged in his devotional service. Similarly, the nine mystics mentioned in the 11th chant of Srimad Bhagavatam are understood to have been transcendentalists from birth, but they became devotees of the Lord by virtue of hearing the transcendental qualities of Krishna from Brahma, Lord Shiva and Narada. Hmm. So the Brahmavadis, those who have knowledge of Brahman, understanding that I'm not God, God is light. They, after they hear about Krishna, they become pure devotees because the Brahman understanding is already there that I'm spirit soul. They only need to hear about Krishna so they can further progress. What is the stumbling block is thinking I am that supreme Brahman, that I am God. That is the biggest, you know, because then that means we are not giving up the um, false ego of being a part and parcel of God not understanding our real position. Yes? So, yeah. here the examples are given again. So, Kadev Goswami, Fokumaras, and also the nine Yogendras, 11th cantors. Then we will read about that. Yeah. Yesterday, so we had, no? They had mentioned. I'm sorry? Yesterday, so it was mentioned, no? About this. Uh, the Sanakumars, how they got engagement. That's right. Yeah. That's and right. Other, other also. Yeah. Yes, that's right. right. So because they already understand I'm spirit soul, they already understand that God is supreme. So by hearing about Krishna, they become pure devotees. Already because that basic understanding is there. But if they were thinking I'm God myself, then that's where the problem begins. Then we don't want to hear about Krishna. Hmm. That's why it becomes a stumbling block. Okay. Right. So thank you so much for listening and joining in. Gauranga Mahaprabhu ki jai, Gaur Bhakti Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shri Prabhupada ki jai.